we are. So terror management is because when you say that, I think about error management theory, but it's it's not the same as that. No. No, it's not the same. Uh, I mean, I, I can give you kind of a brief it overview. Just yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, it just rhymes. Yeah, it just rhymes. That's the right. only thing. That... <laughs> That's it. So, so it sounds like you're interested in it. So uh, terror management theory was uh, developed by Tom Pazinski, Jeff Greenberg, and Sheldon Solomon. So three social psychologists who uh, did their grad work at University of Kansas and who read Ernest Becker's uh, Denial of Death. Mm-hmm. So this Pulitzer Prize winning uh, cultural anthropologist writes this book about how the majority of human motivation is focused around this idea that humans have, uh, you know, they're like every other animal in that they realize that they too are going to die, right? So every animal is going to die. Humans are no exception, but they're different from every other animal in as much as we have superior intellectual capability and the capacity for self-awareness, right? So we can mentally time travel. We can think about what we're going to be doing in a week, in a month, in a year. If you go far enough out, you realize you're going to be as old as grandpa and we just buried grandpa last week. So if that happened to grandpa, that's going to happen to me. Mm. So that should create the potential for overwhelming anxiety, right? Like, as they say, we should be like clutching for anti-anxiety medications the sizes of like small backpacks, right? We should just be cowered in fear, realizing that no one's going to remember us, right? We are in, we are, we have no more significance, uh, as they would say, than a lizard or a potato, right? But, but we don't like, that's a very uncomfortable reality for us to engage in. And so the way that we manage that existential anxiety is we create these cultural worldviews. And these are ways of seeing the world that imbue our life with meaning and significance, right? So I am making a difference, right? I am, I am going to live on, right? So, so this happens either through achieving symbolic immortality. So everyone's going to remember me because I was on this podcast and this podcast is going to live forever, right? People can <laughs> access me and, and in some way, my, my memory, my consciousness will live on, yeah. right? I'm going to donate a lot of money. They're going to rename a hospital wing after me, right? They're, I'm going to endow a scholarship that people r- will remember or through literal immortality. And that's where religion has cornered the market. Right. The only thing better, uh, the only way that you can beat death is just by saying that death is is not permanent. Right. So like by promising that you're going to live forever. And yeah. Oh, that I mean, that's always just been such a I, I was raised really religious and I, I need to uh, I sometimes need to be walked back because I went through the stages of like uh, being being a very angsty ang- uh, atheist as a teenager and then. Um, at first not knowing that was a thing. And then once I, I was like, why isn't everyone this? And then, <laughs> and then eventually like learning enough about evolution to have an appreciation for how many of these belief systems evolved. And, but, um, it did always seem like, uh, like a little bit of a, uh, it, it's a weird product to sell, to go to church and be like, Hey, give me some money now and you get everything you ever want after you, you we deliver right. this package to you after after you die yeah i think that's the interesting thing and then when you think about religion as it it can answer some of the core existential fears we have you can sort of understand how it came about mm. um but you're right if we view it as like money now for heaven later <laughs> that it starts to break down a bit <laughs> yeah yeah i mean religion really is like the total existential package right so like what we talk about in our book is we say that there's like these five core ex or four like five core existential fears right that everybody has to come to terms with so like one is this idea that um what's called freedom or groundlessness so um, we live in a world that's completely uncertain, but we have to make decisions and bear the responsibility for those decisions where there are like an infinite number of choices. Which is why one of, I mean, and, and COVID will hit on each one of these, which is why the world is in a state of existential yuck. So let's just call uh, that. <laughs> well, this is, it's so amazing to, uh, uh, that when I, when I reached out and I looked up your your book, I noticed that was released in February. Like, what yes, an incredible! Right before it, actually, the, like the official release date was Monday, March March 9th. 
And then March 13th is when we were in Michigan was like just on fire. And so everything shut down on the third, on, you know, Friday the 13th. You guys are like the, the person that, um, that started like a online gardening company like three months before right. COVID or whatever. Right. Like, hey, we just wrote a book about suffering. Oh, look, world, all yeah. of the suffering, the yeah. most right. of it that we've yeah. experienced in our lifetime. 